Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will discuss what occipital lobe epilepsy is, what the occipital lobe does, diagnosis, symptoms, causes of occipital lobe epilepsy, ocular migraines versus occipital lobe epilepsy, subtypes of occipital lobe seizures, and treatment options. Make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. Please click on our donate link at the top of our channel and donate today. Your donation helps us to make a difference for those battling epilepsy. We appreciate your support. According to NYU Langone Health, occipital lobe epilepsy accounts for 5% of all seizures experienced by people with epilepsy. Causes can be due to a lesion, trauma to the area, or in some situations, there is an unknown cause. Occipital lobe epilepsy is challenging to diagnose and is often misdiagnosed for ocular migraines. The American Optometric Association diagnoses ocular migraines as an episode of vision loss in one eye, usually lasting less than one hour, and is associated with a migraine. The occipital lobes are located in the back of the head and are responsible for visual perception, including color, form, and motion. Damage to the occipital lobe can cause difficulty with locating objects and environment, difficulty with identifying colors, production of hallucinations, visual illusions, inaccurately seen objects, word blindness, and ability to recognize words difficulty in recognizing drawn objects, inability to recognize the movement of an object, and difficulties with reading and writing. An electroencephalogram can pick up any seizure activity that takes place, helping specialists to make a proper diagnosis. An MRI will be conducted to rule out any structural lesions or any other brain abnormalities visible. Genetic mutations and metabolic disorders can cause occipital lobe epilepsy. Tests focus on individual genes, groups of genes, or chromosomes. Visual auras are the most common symptoms. Examples include hallucinations, flashing or steady lights, colors, circles, or other shapes. Complex visual hallucinations are less common. Hallucinations consist of well-defined, organized and clear images in which the individual has little control. It is believed that they represent release phenomena due to the deafferentation of the visual association areas of the cerebral cortex, leading to a form of phantom vision. Other visual symptoms are temporary blindness, loss of a part of the visual field, turning the eyes to the side as if following some moving object, eye closure, and eye fluttering, seizure activity spreading from the occipital lobes to other lobes in the brain can produce generalized seizures such as tonic-clonic. Seizures can be frequent and run in clusters. According to the article, Occipital Lobe Epilepsy, Structural versus Genetic, structural causes are similar to epilepsy arising from other regions of the brain, such as strokes, tumors, vascular malformations, trauma, infections, and other developmental abnormalities. Metabolic disorders have been known to cause focal seizures originating in the occipital lobe. Severe hypertensive encephalopathy in pregnancy has a tendency to predominantly affect the occipital lobes. Ocular migraines are typically caused by reduced blood flow or spasm of blood vessels in the retina or behind the eye. They are more common in women than in men. The average age of people diagnosed with ocular migraines is 30 to 39. Occipital lobe seizures can affect both children and adults and take place in the occipital lobe. They are mistaken for migraine headaches due to the similar symptoms such as visual disturbances, partial blindness, nausea, vomiting, and headache. According to the International League Against Epilepsy, there are five subtypes of occipital lobe seizures. Primary visual cortex, 
Seizures that take place in this area are focal sensory visual seizures. They may be positive visual phenomena, negative phenomena, or blindness. Bilateral loss can take place in form of a blackout or whiteout. Extra striate cortex. Seizures in this area are associated with more complex form visual hallucinations, such as pictures of people, animals, or scenes. These are considered focal cognitive seizures. Parietal occipital junction. Epileptic nystigmas may be seen. If seen is typically with the fast component to the side, contralateral to the hemisphere of seizure onset, and the slow component returning to the ipsilateral side. Eye movements can occur with retained awareness and may be accompanied by head or trunk version. Eyelid flutter or forced eyelid closure may take place. Inferior to the calcarine seizure. Occipital seizures arising in this area tend to spread to the temporal lobe, producing a focal impaired awareness seizure. Superior to the calcarine seizure. Occipital seizures arising in this area can spread to the parietal lobe, frontal parietal, operculum, or frontal lobes. Focal atonic motor seizures can occur if the seizure spreads rapidly to the frontal regions. Carbamazepine, levetiracetam, lamotrigine, and valproic acid are medications that can be used to treat occipital lobe seizures. An occipital lobe resection can be performed when an abnormal structure or lesion is located. To learn more about occipital lobe epilepsy, please check out the resources used in the presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media pages. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.